Good morning, church. How are you guys doing today? If you want to jump to your feet, happy Sunday. We're excited that you're here. Welcome to Joy Church. If it's your first time here, then welcome. We're happy that you're here. If it's not your first time here, we're still happy that you're here. Um, we're excited to worship the Lord this morning. It's a great day. We're going to be celebrating tonight our 35th anniversary as a church. So you guys are the late risers. We had the real Christians here at 9 a.m. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so they're going to put a verse up there for you. One of my favorite verses. It's Psalms chapter 96. It says this. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. And I love this. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. And this morning, if you're new to church, you're going to see people singing. They're going to be lifting their hands. They're going to be dancing because we believe our God is great. We believe he's worthy of all our worship. We're not ashamed to dance. We're not ashamed, ashamed to have some joy and worship our God. So we're excited. Lord, we thank you for this day. I just thank you for this opportunity to gather with your people. Holy Spirit, we welcome you this morning. Come and have your way. God, we want to be near to you this morning. We want to honor you, God. We want to glorify you. So Jesus, I thank you as we worship you. You're here with us. Strengthen every person. I pray that, Lord, as we leave this place, that we'll leave with your spirit and your presence to go touch our city. In the name of Jesus, everybody said, amen. amen. Snows no bounds, your goodness never stops, your mercy follows me, your kindness fills my life, your love amazes me. Come on, church, you know it, I'll sing. And I sing because you are good, and I dance because you are good, and I shout because you are good, you are good. To me, nothing and no one comes anywhere close to you. The earth and oceans only reflect this truth, and in my dark. Nights. You shine as bright as day. Your love amazes me. And I sing because you are good. And I dance because you are good. And I shout because you are good. You are good to me. Oh, and I sing because you are good.
course again. But as we were just in worship, you know, we're getting ready to celebrate 35 years. And in the worship practice, I was just kind of, I was getting emotional because God is so good. And guys, there's no place like his presence. Amen. And I just want us to sing this verse again and just kind of forget about everybody else in the room. It's just you and Jesus right this minute. And let's just tell him how much we love him, that there's no place we'd rather be. Can you lift those hands right now? Above all the circumstances, all the fears, all the things that are happening in our nation, in our world, the catastrophes, and the only one that can really fix everything is Jesus. And we're right here with him and he can answer all those prayers, all those needs. Can you just sing that? I can't get enough. I can't get enough. Ooh, we can't get enough of you. No, I can't get enough. Oh, your amazing love. Ooh, it's so amazing. No, I can't get enough. Oh, Jesus.
Yes, Father. Lord, this morning we come before you in agreement with what Pastor Kim spoke, Lord, and we just lay it all before you. Lord God, we put our attention on you regardless of what happened to us this week, regardless of what's going on in the political or social arenas, Lord God, regardless of what's going on with us financially or even in our health, emotionally, Lord God, we leave it all behind. We give it all to you and we put our focus and our attention on you this morning. We thank you, Lord God, that you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are mighty, Lord God, and none of those things matter. So we put our attention on you, Lord God. We worship you this morning. We thank you for how awesome you are, Lord. We love you. We just want to be where you are, Lord God. We love you. We pray that this time would be pleasing to you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. How's everybody doing? Well, we are so excited to have you here this morning. If this is your first time here and you haven't yet maybe checked your kids into class, now is a great time to do that. All you have to do is go out to the foyer, go to the connections table, get them checked in, and go ahead and bring them to class. If you're looking for the next perfect way to get involved here in the community at Joy Church Medford, you're looking for the growth track. The growth track is awesome. We are in week four. It is happening today directly following this service at 1230 in our Dream Teen Center, there is lunch and child care provided. So you don't want to miss that. If you haven't been involved yet, please get to that. And at this time, we'd like to direct your attention to the screens for some video announcements. Good morning, Joy Church. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Allie, and these are the Joy Church announcements. If you're new to Joy and we haven't had the opportunity to meet you yet, we would love to meet you and your whole family out at our Connection Center in the main foyer. Or, right in the seat in front of you, there's a little card like this that says Welcome Home on it. If you don't mind picking it up, filling it out, you can drop it in the offering bucket or leave it at the Connection Center on your way out and we'll turn it in for a free gift. We can't wait to meet you and your family. Men, we have an exciting event coming up for you on October 6th and 7th. We have Man Camp. It's going to be at Fur Point Camp. It's $65 a person, and Pastor Jack Willis is going to be with us. You don't want to miss it, so make sure you get signed up and reserve your spot today out at the Info Center. Dude! <sighs> Cannonball! <laughs> 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 if that does not get you ready for man camp, I am not sure what will. Um, maybe pastor's going to grab you and do that with you if you don't show up in a couple of weeks. But um, good morning, church. You guys doing good this morning? Um, I have a quick announcement. Next week, we have something very special happening um, on October. Hey, they have a slide for it. Um, on October 1st, we have our Connect Group launch, and we are so excited. Um, many of you, how many of you are in a Connect Group already? Wave at me. Let me see you. Good. Um, I want to encourage you, whether you've been in our church, if it's your first day today, or whether you've been here for 20 years, um, Connect Group is the place for you. Um, we believe that every member of Joy Church, it's the heart and soul of our church is our Connect Groups. Um, many times people come and I, they say things like, oh, I feel so disconnected. But I can make you a promise you will probably feel disconnected until you join a group. Sometimes people say, oh man, I go to church, but I feel lonely. Because the church is big, but Connect Group is small. Every single person needs someone who knows them, someone who loves them. Is that you, You're going to get a team of people who are praying for you, who are cheering you on, who are rooting you on. You need that. You need people that you can call them, and they're going to be there to help you. So I'm going to encourage you and urge you. There's a Connect Group. And any excuses you have, I bet you I could get them away. I could get rid of them. We have groups on just about every single day of the week. We have morning groups. We have night groups. We have men's groups and women's groups and couples groups. And for couples that don't want to be together, couples groups that have food together and they split up to talk about each other. <laughs> we have junior high groups. We have high school groups. We have young adult groups. Any group, like, and if there's a group we don't have, come talk to me and you'll start it and then we'll have it. You know, it's awesome. So the moral of the story is you need to be in a group. And I mean it. 
The Bible says that the early church met together in the temple, but they also met house to house. And so we really believe it's biblical is that you need people who love you and who know you and not just for you, but then you can help them and you can encourage them. So next week, our groups launch myself and Pastor Susie and a team. We are at the Connect Group table out there right after service. So come talk to us, ask us questions. Um, if you don't know a group or where a group is or what time, we would love to help get you connected. And I have a free t-shirt. I said, I said something in last service about groups and I got in trouble and I'm not allowed to say it again, so I can't say it. But if you want to know what it was, come talk to me after service at the Connect Group table. <laughs> Let's just say, I thought it was good and I got busted. Um, if you are not in a group or you haven't been in a group, but you're joining a group next week, wave at me and I want to give you a free t-shirt. Hey, right there. Okay. Awesome. I'll throw this at you. If it's not your size, you can trade it out. Awesome. Yes. Um, so that's great. If the ushers want to rise, we are going to take our tithes and offering. Um, so just get ready to do that and come see me at the table after service. Thanks, guys. Good morning, church. How you guys doing? You guys are a good-looking bunch of people. Turn to your neighbor. Tell them you look, you look good. If they're single... Pray that the Lord might bring a mingle. No, I'm just kidding. Don't. <laughs> well, it's great to be here. We have been having an amazing weekend here at Joy Church. Um, how many of you have been able to be a part of our presbytery services this last weekend? And uh, the party is continuing on. In a moment, I'm going to introduce some wonderful guests that we have the honor to be here today. But uh, we've been having a great weekend. God speaking to his people, encouraging the church. And um, tonight we are honored to have our 35th anniversary of Joy Church Medford. And telling you what, it's going to take 35 more years for a 70th party. So you got to come to the 35 year. We've, we've been amping up for 35 years for tonight. And you guys are like, really? <laughs> uh, it's going to be an incredible night just celebrating the faithfulness of God and looking ahead at what God has for Joy Church and as we get ready to plant Joy Church Grants Pass and all that's coming up. Come on, it's celebrating. So do not miss tonight. It starts at 6 o'clock. Um, I've been told to let you know that it is semi-formal. And so you're welcome to wear whatever, but there will be people um, wearing suits and dresses as well as just collared shirts. So, so if you're planning on wearing like swim trunks or something like that, like t tonight's not the night to do that. Uh, but we would love to have you. If it's your first day at Joy Church, come party with us tonight. We love to celebrate. Uh, so join us tonight, 6 p.m. And please get here early to check in your students to or your children to kids class as we'll be starting right on time. So we want to make sure your kids are, are checked in, you find a seat, and celebrate with us. Amen? Amen. Sound good? Uh, I know last night I was talking to Pastor Mike and Susie, and Pastor Mike was letting me know it's been 33 years he's been here at Joy Church, and Mary Smith and our leaders, and just reminiscing, and Pastor Steve and Kim, we get to celebrate them tonight, 35 years, and they are still smiling and loving all of us. That's a mere, that is amazing. And um, also want to invite you, we have an awesome opportunity and a privilege to host the Global Prophetic School, GPS, with Pastor Danny and Giselle Bonet. Giselle's gone, but she was there, I promise. There's, and uh, Pastor Danny and Giselle are going to be having this incredible conference here we get to host and learning more about hearing God's voice and um, recognizing his voice and speaking it, um, speaking what he, he speaks to us. So I'd encourage you, come. This is an incredible opportunity, church. It's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, 7 p.m. each night. Do not miss it and bring somebody with you. Sound good? So join us for the Global Prophetic Conference. So we want to acknowledge and honor some incredible guests that are here. Um, first, we want to just, it's our joy to have Pastor Dick and Roxy Iverson here. And 
Pastor Iverson spoke an incredible message last night. I'm sorry you missed out if you weren't here, um, but we have it recorded. So, uh, But he's going to be sharing a charge with us as a church tonight. You do not want to miss that. And it's just an honor to have them. Um, Pastor Iverson is the grandpa, the grandfather of this house and a spiritual father in, in our house. We just love them. And we're honored to have our presbytery team here, Pastor Danny and Giselle Bonilla. And Pastor Brad and Jenny Neuschwander. Can we just tell them all thank you so much for all they've been pouring in. It's been amazing. So join us tonight, 6 p.m. You don't want to miss it. Um, if you guys would turn in your Bible to Matthew chapter 11, we are launching a brand new series right now called Simplify. Have you noticed that life is very noisy and cluttered. <laughs> and if you're, if you're a mom, you know life is noisy. <laughs> it sounds like a 3 a.m. shrieking call for food or something. Life is very, it, it's constantly moving. It seems like the pressures and the distractions and the pulls are, 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 are like never before. That you're expected to, to be more, do more, be more places, and look better while doing more. There's more comparison than ever. Before, you just, compare, you just came to church and you compared what you saw. You're like, what are they wearing to church? Are they? Now we've got Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, and you name it. We're comparing our lives and we're comparing our houses and we're comparing our jobs and we're comparing whatever. There, there's more pulling for you. There, there, there's more pressure, it seems like, than ever to, to make more money, to buy more stuff and the weight of, of, of debt and the weight of work more and do more, but somehow be more present. <laughs> Have you found, anyone feel those pressures? Have you found that it seems like you get to this place where all of a sudden you just can't carry it anymore? Life can get cluttered. Life can get complicated. And Jesus, he, he is incredible, our, our God, our Savior, because he cares not only about your eternal salvation, but he cares about your daily life. And, and even more than that, he cares about the core of who you are. He cares about your soul. And in fact, in Matthew 11, we're going to read a portion of scripture where he's talking to a group of people, and we'll learn more about them. But in, in Matthew 11, he, he says these words, and I believe that the same words of Jesus spoken 2,000 years ago are being spoken to Joy Church Medford this morning. And they're these words. He says, come, Jesus said, come to me, all of you who are weary and you, carry a he and you carry heavy burdens. And I, Jesus, will give you rest. Yes. Then Jesus, then it goes on, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden I give you is light. We're going to pray this morning. Jesus, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God, that you're speaking to your church this morning, and Lord, we come and we lay our hearts before you. We lay our lives before you, and we, we just ask that you'd have your way. God, I believe this morning you want to break some yokes, and you want to bring some rest to some souls and some hearts. And so, Lord, we yield to you. We ask that you'd reveal yourself. Lord, that those who don't know you this morning, we pray they would encounter you as their Lord and their Savior. Speak this morning, God. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, we talk about your soul. What, what is your soul? It's, it, it, it's, it's not touchable. It's, it's not tangible. It's our mind, our will, our emotions, the core of who we are. The Bible tells us that, that our soul, it, it, um, those who are followers of Jesus, that we will live eternally. Our soul will, will, will Christ saved our souls. And our soul, really simply put, uh, it, it's that the core of who you are and it, it's the essence that 
you can have everything going good on the outside and yet everything on the inside, you know it's not okay, right? And this morning as we talk about our souls, I was thinking about, I think a lot of us, if we're honest, this is what our souls kind of look like. It's this, I, I, to, this morning when um, Cameron Withy did this wonderful fine art of tangling, I asked my husband, I was like, hey, does this look good? And he's like, it looks like something I don't want to have anything to do with. <laughs> Every part of his body was like, I do not want to untangle that mess. And then in the back, the sound guy told me, hey, that's what a, a, a marriage person talks about, what a girl's mind looks like. <laughs> so they've been helping me. This, thanks, Ryan. Today, I, I am not going to try to explain the mind of a woman. I'll leave that for better, better preachers. But, but I think if we're honest, our soul, if we try to figure out, some of us came in this morning, and if you were asked this question, how are you doing, you, 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 I, I don't know. Where do I start? In the Wesleyan movement, John Wesley is a great hero of faith and great man of God. And, and, and actually his small groups, his connect groups, every one of them began with this question. Before anything else, they would ask this question every time. How is it with your soul? How is it? Not how, how's work, how's life, how's the family? No, no, no. How are you at the core of who you are that even when everything is going externally well or everything is in chaos, how is it on the inside? Because I think some of us came today with a soul that looks a little bit like this. I don't know how to figure it out. I don't know how to untangle it. I don't know how my marriage is going. I don't know. And you know what I love? is that we serve a God who does know how to untangle it, who does know how to bring clarity in confusion and hope in desperate moments. And so we gotta set up a little bit of context. Who is Jesus talking to? He comes in this moment and he says, come to me all who are weary and heavy. Like, who are we talking to? Primarily in this moment, he's talking to a group of Jewish people. And they, their people, the, the, the Jews had been waiting eagerly for thousands of years for the coming Messiah. And they were seeking to follow the laws and the ways of God. And at this point when Jesus meets these people, there were 613 commands that had been given in the Bible, in, in, in the Old Testament. There were 613 commands they were to follow. This is not even counting where the Pharisees had come and added addendums to what God had said. 613, let's give some clarity. You ever gotten a to-do list from your spouse? Three things you have to do and they get home and you forgot all three. And we've got 613 commands. And on top of this, people, they're, they're wanting to please God. And every day they're feeling like, I can't, I forgot number 547. I'm never winning. And on top of 613 commands they are trying to do to please God. Everyone had their interpretation of what the most important command was. So there's actually a written account of one rabbi. He was convinced the number one command to obey, if you're going to obey, was the command that on the long robe they would wear with fringe. Come on, let's bring back that style for the guys. <laughs> fringe robes. Tonight you can buy one for the 35th century. <laughs> one rabbi believe that the number one commandment, if you weren't able to not break, was the commandment to not tear, this is a real command, to not tear the fringe of your robe. And so it's account, re recounted that this rabbi climbed up a ladder and in climbing up the ladder, tore the hem of his robe and waited upon the ladder until somebody could come and mend it. So who is... 
That's dedication. And Jesus came, he, he told me, he said, I didn't come to abolish the law, I came to fulfill it. But he's coming to a people who they're weary, they're, 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 they're failing, they, they're, they're trying to follow his ways. Some weren't trying, but those who were trying to follow, he's talking to a context of people that at some point feel like, no matter what I do, I'm this ball of chaos. I'm this, there's, I don't know how to do this in my own strength. They were weary. And on top of that, they probably just had life's weariness. They still had relational issues and they are weary and Jesus comes to these people like he comes to you and I today and says, come to me, all you who are weary. So who is this message for this morning? If you have any weariness, if you have anything in your soul that's in chaos, God wants to talk to you today. Are you guys with me? You all right? Loving Jesus? So here's a couple things that I think we need to know as we set this up. It's one that every human soul, whether you've been following Jesus for the last 40 years or you're just coming to find out who this Jesus is, every soul has the potential to get weary, weighed down, and cluttered. We meet King David, and he was a shepherd boy and, 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 and a, a warrior and a leader and later a king. And even King David, who you think, or David, who you think should have it all together, he cries out in Psalms 42, this declaration. He says, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation. In Natalie's paraphrase, David's going, yo soul, what's up with you? What's going on on the inside? It's not okay. And sometimes you just gotta, you gotta realize it doesn't matter if you're a man, you're a woman, you're young, you're old, you're a follower of Jesus, or you're just checking out who Jesus is today. Sometimes you gotta say, what's up with my soul? And you got to know that Jesus says, I care about your soul. The second thing we have to know is this reality is the worth of your soul. Why is it worth giving our attention and energy to care for our soul? The Bible tells us that what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? Your soul matters and God cares about your soul. So this morning, here's a thought. I believe soul tired is greater than bone tired. Soul tired. There is a weariness that no amount of Netflix can cause to heal within your soul. Vacations every weekend of the month cannot cause your soul to live again and your soul to come into order. There is, a, there is a place in your soul that you got to recognize you're not going to get your soul better just because you, 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 you have more relaxation and you have more money. And we look at culture and the culture tells us you're going to feel better if you have a bigger house. And culture tells you you're going to feel better if you do some sort of new fitness plan. And culture tells you you're going to do better if you have another relationship. And the problem is your marriage. You're not happy in your marriage. So get out of your marriage and then you'll get happy if you get that fling. And the culture will tell you all all the world tells us all these ways to make your soul better and it will just cause you to be more tangled up and weary. Come on. And there's a place in your soul that you gotta say, what, what's going on in my soul and what's gonna get me out of this is not what got me into this. But it's gonna be coming to the one who bids me come and who understands my soul and understands the core of who I am for he created me. And he knows me and he can redeem the broken places. Recently, um, I was out of town for, for about a week. And so my husband, Riley, he's back there. What's up? Oh, <laughs> just want to give him a shout out. No. And I have to preface this for this story because he is a very strong, the most handsome, incredible man. But I'm about to tell a story that won't make him sound so strong, but he's very strong. 
And he gave me permission. Recently, he called me. Uh, I was at town and he said, hey, Thomas asked me to work out. I'm going to go work out with Thomas and Devin. Now, if you don't, Thomas emceed this morning and his wife just told me that he works out sometimes for three hours at a time. The man is a beast. <laughs> And so Thomas invited Riley to come work out. And so um, him and Devin and Riley work out. And my husband puked. <laughs> so he let me know. He's like, oh, my gosh, I worked out with them. And, like, it, it was crazy. And, and I puked. And, like, You're, you are so manly. Um, <laughs> because you worked out through the puke. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's the man that pukes, but keeps going. But there's more to the, but wait, there's more. <laughs> so I'm out of town, I can't like console, you know, like have a steak, it'll help. Um, fixes everything. <laughs> You're so strong, Riley. I just, I believe in you. I, <laughs> but I don't think he realized, this is, this is the wife interpretation, that um, I think he was actually a little sick and he didn't realize it because the whole week he couldn't come back from the tired. He could hardly eat through the week. His body, could, he was lethargic at, at work. And if you know Riley, like there's not a lethargic cell in his body. And I thought it was such a picture that some of us, you, you're doing life and it's way harder than it should be. You're living life and you think something externally is going to change what only God internally can transform. And I think we have to recognize sometimes you just gotta go when Jesus says, come to me all who are weary, Stop being the tough girl or the tough guy that's like, oh, that must be for my neighbor. You got to get real and say, I think my soul's tired. Yeah. I think somewhere an offense came in. I think somewhere discouragement came in. I think somewhere bitterness came in. I think somewhere disappointment came in. And my soul is weary. Yeah. And realize that there is a weariness that only Jesus can take away. Yeah. And this isn't just... For those who don't know Christ, this is for us who are on the journey of following Jesus. The next thought is this. We've got to let our souls come home. There's no place like home. You all know, you, you, you know when you get home and you drop your bags and you lay your head on your pillow, right? And you, you know exactly where the coffee, you don't have to open your eyes, you know where it's at, the coffee pot. <laughs> yeah, Giselle knows. And I think many of us, your soul's not home. Home is when it's in right relationship with Jesus. And even hearts who have followed Jesus for many years can wander from home that our peace is found in Christ, our strength is found in Christ, our life is found in Christ. It is not a one-time commitment, it is a daily response to his bid to come and find rest in him. And on most smartphones, there's a map app and you put in where your home is when you get your phone and you can be anywhere in the world and when you hit, there's a button, to just go home and it will calculate the directions wherever you are to bring you back home. I think some of us this morning need to hit the home button on our souls and say, I'm coming home to you, Jesus. I'm coming back to a place of right relationship and walking with you. My soul's coming home. Church, are you wearing the correct yoke? So Jesus calls them. He says, hey, guys, all you who are weary and heavy laden, they're expecting more stuff to do. We have 613 commands. 614 is coming right now. All you who are heavy, weary and heavy laden, 
He bids them, he comes, he says, come, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And many of us are walking with this yoke and carrying things Jesus never asked you to carry. He already carried it for you. Many of us are walking around and we're doing more and being more and trying more and going more and our souls are cluttered and our hearts are weary and, and, and we're trying to carry the shame that Jesus already paid for and we're trying to carry the, 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 the worry that Jesus has given us freedom from. We're trying to walk around with fear like it's our best friend. And, and the question is this morning, are you carrying something Jesus never asked you to carry? Are you wearing a yoke? Are, are you trying to, to line up with, with a standard uh, that the world sets instead of what Jesus set? And we have to be real and say, are there places in my life that I'm trying to run towards God never asked me to do and run towards? Are you guys with me? I think this morning... Would you just take a moment and allow the Holy Spirit to just reveal, is there something you're doing or carrying around that God's saying it's time to take off? It could be in your schedule, it could be in your family, it could be in your finances, it could be in your thought life. Something where you say, I'm carrying something Jesus never asked me to carry. Because I believe as we get ready to land this this plane, that this morning we can say peace out to worry. Peace out to worry. Now Jesus, he comes and he says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest for my yoke is easy. So we think, okay, so Jesus is gonna just give me a little bit lighter load. No, here's what you have to understand about a yoke. A yoke was always made in this time for a team of oxen. A yoke was made for two to carry. And if Jesus invites you to come and put the yoke on, then who's yoked right next to you? And Jesus calls you and he bids you and he says, come to me. You who are weary and your soul is tired and your soul is in turmoil, come to me and you're gonna find rest for my yoke. I'm gonna come right next to you and I'm gonna be yoked next to you and when you walk through the journey of life and when you face your daily moments and when you walk through what you walk through, every step you take, Jesus is right next to you. Everywhere you go, he's the guide. He's leading you, he's guiding you, he's directing you. He is next to you. And you know this morning, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, you can tell worry to peace out, to see you later. In the words of the young people, they say, deuces, I'll see you later. Some of you got to tell worry, see you later. Fear, see you later. Distraction, see you later. Because I am yoking myself to Jesus. And the, the sneaky thing about Jesus is he makes you think you're actually carrying part of the load. But you're like a little kid if you've ever watched people moving something and the little kid says, Mommy, Daddy, I want to help you. And they walk around and they just put their finger underneath whatever is being carried and they walk. And the, everyone else carries the weight and they're like, yeah, I'm so strong. That's what we look like when we're yoked next to Jesus. He says, hey, I'm going to lead you to this direction. I'm going to guide you into this place. We're like, yeah, Jesus, God. We're walking with him and he's carrying the load. He's with you. The Bible tells us in Psalms 32, 8, the Lord says, here's what God says to you. I will guide you along the best pathway. When you're yoked next to Jesus, he will lead you on the best pathway. It's gonna be an adventure. It might not look like what you expected. It might not fit your five-year plan. It's gonna have some bumps. It's gonna have some hills. It's gonna have some mountains. But when you know who's by your side, you can come with rest and with peace because you're yoked next to Jesus. And he says, I'm your guide. I'm your teacher. I'm gonna lead you on the best pathway of your life. He knows where to lead you. He knows where to lead you.
The invitation this morning is first for every one of us to come to Jesus. That's the first bit. He says, come to me. And this morning, the invitation for us to come, to leave some things behind and just come to him. And then he tells us to learn from Jesus. I'm gonna teach you. And the second invitation is, come on, some of us need to come. We need to learn, relearn how to live this life of following Jesus from the best teacher, and his name is Jesus. And lastly, we will find rest in Jesus. When we come to him, as he teaches us, there's a rest and a grace and a strength. Would you stand this morning, church? This morning, if you came to this place and you find yourself with a confused, cluttered, torn, broken soul, you came to the right place. Because here's the reality is that we serve a God and his name is Jesus. And he came and there was nobody yoked next to him, but he yoked himself to a cross. And he carried that cross and he willingly said, I will take the sin and the brokenness and the bondage and the shame of the whole world. And Jesus, our God, the Son of God came and he willingly gave his life as a sacrifice so that we could have life. He gave his life on the cross and he took our shame and our, our shame and our sin and our bondage. And three days later, he rose again from the grave. And this morning, he invites you, if you came to this place and you've never given your life to Jesus, that invitation to come is for you. That invitation to come and find life, salvation, hope, freedom and, and, and have a brand new start is for you today. So if you came to this place looking for life, I wanna ask you to leave your seat and come to the front right now. We wanna pray with you. If you came to this place and you say, I need Jesus to save me. I can't do this on my own. I need him to give me a brand new life. I want you to just step out of your seat right now quickly and we wanna pray with you. Every person in this place that says, I need Jesus. I need a brand new life. I need a new soul. I need him to redeem my life. Come on, every person, I believe there's people all over this place. You came to this place looking for life and you're in the right place. Come on, right now, I just wanna invite you. If you've never given your life to Jesus or you know you've been walking away and you've been living in your own strength, tonight, you want to, this morning, you wanna give your life. Come right now. Every one of you, come right now. Every person. Today's a great day to say yes to Jesus, to come. He wants to give you freedom and hope and liberty. So last call this morning, if you're here and you say, man, I need Jesus. I'm coming to him. I'm putting my trust in him as my Lord and Savior. Would you step out of your seat? Come right now. We just want to make an opportunity for every person. Awesome. And the Bible says all of heaven rejoices when one soul, one person comes home to Jesus. So God bless you guys. We celebrate with you. Church, can we pray together? I just pray this prayer together. Dear Jesus, I give you my life. Jesus, I put my trust in you that you alone can save me. I believe that you are my God and you are my savior. And you paid the price I could never pay. Jesus, I receive your life. I receive your freedom. And I put my trust in you. Help me to follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we give them a hand? God bless you guys. Church this morning, for all of us, the rest of us here this morning, if you're here and you say, you know, I find myself, there's some places where there's been some clutter in my soul and I need to simplify. I need to come and allow God to take those yokes that I was never meant to bear 
and to wear the perfect yoke, the, 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 to come and take Jesus' yoke, to find rest in Him, to find strength in Him. If you're here this morning, you need some uncluttering in your soul, would you just lift your hands right now, whatever it might be, just lift your hands. Come on, and this morning, I believe that the Holy Spirit's just gonna begin to break off some yokes and take off, come on, worry doesn't have to be your friend anymore. You don't have to cling to fear. Shame is not your portion. Come on, this morning, allow God to just bring that freedom. Lord, I thank you this morning that, Lord, you said come, and Lord, as your people, we come to you, Jesus. We look to you and we find rest for our souls, not from something external, but God, we pray you'd come in and change the internal, God. Lord, we receive your rest. We receive your grace and your strength, God, that you're gonna help us to live the best life you've called us to live, to follow your perfect path for our life. Jesus, right now, I pray for your sons and daughters that you would just begin to break off yokes off their life that you, they were never meant to carry. Jesus, I pray that right now as a church, we would find rest in you as we journey with you on this life, God. We love you in Jesus' name. Church, we're gonna just sing a song to respond to this and just take a few moments to thank the Lord for what he's doing in our lives and just receive that freedom he has for us, amen? So let's worship. Father, we pray that you would have your way in us, Lord God. We give you our souls. We thank you for this time. We pray that you would bless it and bless this day in Jesus' name. Amen.